when we first had the third party administrator come in, we, it, we informed you all about the ability to sign up for the ASO account where you'll be able, you at the time was able to see your dental benefits for you and your family. So now what we did was, um, as for the medical um, benefits, we adopted ASO system, but we'll still be the ones processing the claims. So now what we've done now, not only will you be able to see your, your dental benefits and you'll be able to, remember I was telling you, you was able to see, you have a selection of about over 2000 dentists to choose from. Well, now you'll be able to um, go into that same system and you'll now be able to see your medical, your optical and any and all your benefits and balances. So instead of always calling the union office, which we don't mind, but for your own self, you can now go on to, onto the system and look at how much you have. So we get a lot of calls about, well, how much do I have an optical? And when's the next time we can use optical again? By the way, which will be 2021, everybody's all over again. Now you'll be able to actually see your accounts and see what the balances are. So we are now starting, we're up and running. Every, we have a whole new system in place now. We have a whole new IT person and everything is in place. And um, to, with an, another thing we had to do was to make sure that Charlene and Joanne who processed the claims was safe. So just like you guys are working from home in a stagnant schedule, I have them working from home as well. So we have to make sure their systems work in there where they work, where they live at, as well as they have a system in the house. So over here in the office. So they come in in stagnant schedules and they work from home. So we have to make sure all that was in place too. So now everything is pretty much in place. Um, we're starting to enter the claims into the system. Alan's going to tell you more about the whole process in the system that we now have in place. And I, but we should, and he'll tell you more about it, we should be able to start printing checks by the end of this week, no later than the beginning of next week. So I'm going to turn it over to Alan. Tanja's going to put, um, share the screen, and he's going to do his. The name is Mr. Alan Sachs. So let's welcome Mr. Alan Sachs. Yay, Alan. <laughs> well, thank you for the round of applause. You um, so with our system, you'll be able to log on. You create. Um, a username and password and we have some suggestions to make sure that you use a secure username and password and then also you'll have the ability to uh, activate two-factor uh, verification uh, with the two-factor verification you either depending on how you set it up you'll get a code to your telephone number like your uh, mo your mobile phone or to your email and so when you log on with your password, you'll also need to use that code that you get to your email. It's just an added security with uh, one thing we want to make sure is we want to give everyone access to information, but we want to make sure that we're providing it in a, in a most uh, secure manner. And we created a, um, a user, uh, we created a little document to help walk you through uh, creating the username and password and then the different functions uh, that will be available um, to you. Uh, would you want, want me to give a quick uh, share screen or? Yeah, um, can you want to share the screen? Can you see it? No, we can't. Okay, wait, give me a second. Ken's going to share the screen. And I know you probably have a full agenda, so I won't spend too much time on it. I believe yes, uh, we'll, yes, uh, okay. we'll um, uh, the document will be posted so this way you can there review it. There it is. She's going to share. There it is. Okay, Alan. Okay, so uh, slide two. So the the website is asonet.com. And then on uh, slide two is the um, uh, is where you'll log in as a member. And then if you, you, you'll click that you're a member. And then you can go to now slide three. And in slide three, if you want to just get some basic information about the plan, like to find a participating dentist or get a form, you could go to quick search and then there's a little down arrow and then you'll scroll down to where it says United Probation Officers Association, that's for the active members, or you scroll or below that it says UPOA if you're a retiree. And then when you click on either for the participating dentist or for forms, that'll bring you directly to those um, uh, to those functions without having to 
log in as a member. And now on slide, the next slide. So now here's the slide. Um, if you want to log in as a uh, member, so you click in the uh, username and password. And then uh, if you're just signing on for the first time, where we have highlighted in yellow, you want to click there to create a username and password. And so now on slide five. Wait, the first one you would do is you would first, your first attempt, you'll enter in with your social security number, your first initial of your first name, the first initial of your second name and your zip code. That's to create a username and password. It'll open to another screen where you'll create a username and password. Yeah, the yellow button there. on the bottom is to retrieve a password that you forgot. Okay, back to Alan, go ahead. Okay, so, um, no, it's slide we have to. So now here's where you would, um, uh, so now actually, if you're a little more familiar, why don't you walk through this? So I said, what this, the step I just described before, where you're going to uh, set up, you're logging in with your um, social security number and your um, ID number, that's when you're gonna be brought up to this screen. And this screen is where you're gonna um, answer a few security questions that will remain on file so that you'll set up your own security question like what color is my car? So that if you ever forget your, your password, it'll ask you that question that you created and so you'll know your own answer. Okay, uh, and then and then you'll go on to create your own uh, user name. Um, go ahead, next slide. Thanks for Ellen. Yeah. So then, um, Gail, you'll be you'll be created your you, you know, next slide after that. So here you created your new username. Already. Uh, Okay, where are we now? Okay, once you're in there, this is the first screen. This is your home page. It's going to say "Welcome Jane" or "Welcome uh, Sh Sheila" or "Welcome Michelle," whatever your first name is, and it's going to it's going to show you um, all your benefits are available to you on the left hand side that says benefits. So you can look at your uh, claims history. You can upload claims, um, what, what benefits you have. Also, you can print an ID card here. Sometimes doctors ask you for ID card or Sometimes you want to just keep a, a, um, a card to have it. When you click on it, 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 instead of using your social security number, you're going to get what's called a, a unique ID number. That number can be used to submit claims. So you don't have to provide anybody with your social security number or um, anything. That All claims can be used with that number. Okay, slide down. We'll have a sample of that card after. We'll see it. There. Next slide. Yeah, here's the ID card. Once you click on print ID card, you can, this is a letter that'll, that'll be generated to you and you see the cards on the bottom. You can take a screenshot of it or cut, print it and save it um, just so you have it, tell you how to submit claims and uh, uh, other information. Okay, next slide. Oops. Oh, move on up, oh, no, no. next one. Yeah, uh, the next one is when you get to view claims. So you can um, you can have the claim set, just look at just look at your dental. See, right now it's set to all benefits. You can select it to change just to dental or just to optical or just to your um, your med medical supplemental, which is your prescriptions and all the other benefits that you have. Um, next screen. On there, there was a link that had the claim. If you click the link, it opens up to your claim and you could see um, how much was paid, what the services that were submitted, um, who was paid Hello. to. Next claim. The next up, screen. me. Um, here's also where you could, uh, the first part where you could search for participating dentists. Here you could put in your, it already propagates your address, but if you want to see a different area, you could put in the zip code um, and search by miles, search by, search by um, type of provider, whether it be all doctors, general doctors, periodontists, endodontists, you can narrow it down um, by, um, by, by that. Next screen. This will show you the doctors searching you, tell you how many miles they are from, your, from the location that you selected. Next screen. And then here we just have some, that whatever data we collected on that doctor via the surveys. I don't know if any of you have received some of our surveys, but when you submit the survey and it collects, um, we collect the data and then we're able to like display member satisfactions. 
Next screen. Okay. Here's also when you want to up if you want to um to find the form, um, you click on what kind of form you want, and it'll um uh, open up to the form that's on file. So if you need a dental form, you click on the form. It'll be there. You click on your benefits booklet. It'll be there. It'll open up for you to see the, to view. We click the view button, and it'll open up to there to your documents. Next slide. Um, here, if you need to upload a dental claim to us, you would just um, click on upload claim. You'd select the file that you want to upload from your computer or your phone or whatever, wherever you have the file stored. You click up, upload claim, and then you click send to ASO, and it sends us, it sends you the claim number, it sends us the claim with your link, and then we can process it from there. And remember to, to don't uh, e never email a claim form because it might have per, uh, personal information. So when you do it through our system, it comes through our secure system. So it comes through uh, encrypted. You, you never want to email anything with personal data on it. Okay. Next slide. Okay, this here, when you click on the benefit, it just tells you, like here, if you click on the optical tab, it tells you who is eligible for optical, how much was used, how much was remaining. The next slide is for the same thing for supplemental benefits. How much was, who, if you're eligible, how much was used, how much the benefit is. Okay. At the end? That's it, that's it. Yep. <laughs> okay, it has a lot of information here. Um, but it just it, you have a lot of information available to you. Um, and so you just click on the links and you should be able to find your way through anything. But we're always here to help. If you um, have any questions or you want to contact us, we can walk you through it as well. Okay. Thank you, Alan, and thank you, Simone. So is there the same number that we normally use to contact ASO, would that be the, the number to call? The, if the five, what number should they call if they need help to um, log on? They, they can call our main number, which is 516-396-5500. Uh, OK. Anybody you ask for, just tell them the, the issue, and they'll just direct them. Yeah, just tell them. you I'm trying to go on the website, and I'm trying to find a form, and they'll tell you how to locate the form. OK. So Alan has mentioned that it's can you not- Can just repeat the number one more time? It's 516-396-5500. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we also have an 800 number. What is it? it it's 800-537-1238. OK. And this, and this PowerPoint presentation is going to be um, Uploaded into the website, right, Tansy? You're gonna have it has one? already been. Okay, Alan, are you gonna make any adjustments to that, or is that sufficient? Yeah, I think we're gonna work on a little bit more, but this is this is good for now, and then we'll just you know continue to to improve upon it. So as you so right now, you all can now get on to ASO and um, sign yourselves up, and you also heard that you don't have to when you submit claims. Once you sign yourself up, you'll have your own. Um, ID number to write on the claim form. So you'll have claim forms available on the ASO system as well as the UPOA system to um, retrieve document forms. And um, like Alan had mentioned before, and I'm glad you mentioned it, we are not going to, we're not, we're going to stop taking um, for the reasons Alan said and other reasons for um, not accepting email um, claims anymore because we, we, unless, Alan, let me ask you a question. Will they be able to scan up those claims to the system of the, you mentioned dental, but can they do it for the medical as well as the um, optical? The, the ones yeah. that you're processing, we can work on directing them to, Simone, yeah, they yes, can do that, yes, right? Yes, they can, yeah, yeah they can. Yeah. And then yes. you'll just find those claims. And I'll, you'll show, we'll show us you that, that. Yes, yes. And you'll show yes. us how to do that, because, yes. right, so right now, if they wanted to scan them into the system, they couldn't, and you'll show us how to retrieve them and process them. Yes, it'll, okay. it'll come up for you, yep. Now, when we normally process, let me tell you, ladies, and tell you all about the beauty of this. I, I hate to use this similarity, but it's similar to the CE that we use at work almost. You have your own, we, you now have e-folders. Like, we have manual folders in the office for you guys, but now we'll have an actual e-folder, and all your claims will be connected into, the, um, into your, each, each of your um, 
poses, so to speak, for uh, for us to review. But it's it's another way of securing your, your um your information. So with that said, I hope everybody takes advantage of it. Alan, stay there for a minute. So we have the annuity funds, right? So when we when the last contract we we agreed and you all agreed to um, annuity fund, which is right, Harry, two hundred and sixty one dollars per person right. a year, not a month. I made the mistake and was thinking it was every month. We would have been rich by now. So it's $261 a, a year going back to May 2019. So now we're in the process of putting that all together. ASO will be our third party administrator. They will be overseeing your monies. And we are linking ourselves with, they, no, um, we're going to have an investment company and um, Alan will be our third party administrator. Alan, correct me if I'm wrong. Once we get that set up, will they also have access to their annuities? And oh, how's that? That's correct. There'll, there'll be a tab on the website to go to your annuity account. It'll show your opening balance. It'll show the contributions posted on your behalf and the investment results uh, posted uh, to your account. Right. So, so you so, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, and so, and so you'll have access to that information. We will be acting as the uh, record keeper in terms of uh, collecting the contributions from the city, posting it to your accounts, um, and the handling of uh, the distribution applications and sending out annual annuity statements this way. Uh, not only will you have access to your account balance throughout the year, but also on an annual basis, you'll receive an annuity statement. And we'll be having, just like we do for the welfare fund, we'll have our monthly trustee meetings with the annuity, for annuity trustees, with, our, with the accountants and the, and the lawyers and, and the total accountability from all from all angles. As a matter of fact, the um, investment manager um, reached out to me today and we got to talk about scheduling the meeting to talk about the funds and the annuity money. So everything is, Accountability is covered in all ways. And then and, and annually what's required by the um the city is the same thing with the with the fund. We have to um do these audits and uh, audits done. Will audits be done just like they do with the with the fund monies and other monies? Yeah, yeah. The on a quarterly basis, the accountant will be reviewing the accounts and calculating the investment results on the information provided by the custodial um They'll, there's going to be uh, an investment manager, but then all the all the money and transactions will go through a custodial bank that helps. It's an added layer of protection. So the investment manager, um, then you have the custodian, and then you have the uh, 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 the auditor reviewing all this source documentation. And on a quarterly basis, the investment results will be uh, posted to your accounts. And then on an annual basis, the auditor will prepare what's called a Directive 12, which the city requires. Mm -hmm. it, um, they provide specific information that the city collects to make sure that your funds are being um, administered properly and they look for certain things like, um, you know, just to make sure that just an extra layer of, uh, of eyes on, on how oh, everything is being administered. All right. Now, in the beginning, you will, you, you, and correct me if I'm wrong, Harry or Alan, you, we will not see any really major return right now because the startup cost is going to absorb some, Harry? How does that so, work? So when we first get the money, it's going to be more than a year's of money. So let's say we'll get three or $400 per person, but everything costs money. So some of that is an administrative course, um, and I need to take this call. So I'll so take I'll, I'll take so I could take Still over. Okay. Mute yourself, Abby. So, so with um, as the fund, uh, there's the administrative costs. Most of the administrative costs are like a flat fee. Right. So as the as the money grows, um, and the investment the 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 larger the account balance, so the administrative expenses as a percentage will will go down. But at first, um, there'll be these um, administrative costs, um, which will be larger. And then, um, but as time goes on, the accounts build up, um, 
it, it becomes a, a much uh, smaller percentage. Um, it was one more question I wanted to ask, just in case. Um, um, it was the administrative course. I can't remember. I, I'm having a senior moment. Um, the administrative course. Oh, and separating from the agency. When you separate from the agency, whether it's retirement or you go to another agency, do you necessarily have to pull your money or we would continue? Can we continue to invest our money for them until they're ready to build, you know, get it? Uh, that depends on how the plan is set up. Generally, okay. the plans are set up where you can keep your money in the account um, with, with the fund. And then, uh, but as time goes on, once you reach uh, uh, age either 70 and a half or age 72, the uh, government requires what's called the required minimum of dist required minimum distribution so that you would then have to start taking out at least the minimum distribution. So when you, when they, when you say taking out, that's your responsibility to send them the checks, right? Not ours. Well, you'll, we'll send a letter on an annual basis. And so you'll have the option either to withdraw all your money at that time, or you could just take the minimum distribution. Okay. And also uh, there'll be information going out. Since this is a separate fund from the welfare fund, uh, you'll need uh, to file a, um, in a, a beneficiary form specifically for the annuity fund to designate a uh, beneficiary for the benefit. Okay, I'm back. So all Let's right, so this. Um, so the administrative cost, a startup cost is a one time startup cost, and then through the year, the accountants, ASO, and the lawyers have to come to your meetings and do what's necessary, both legally and administratively, and there'll be a cost. Now, everybody involved understands that this is an infancy, it's an infancy. So there can't be a whole lot of money at this point. Hopefully, and I wish this for all of you, we get millions of dollars, which means you're getting a lot. And then the, if the fee could be the normal fee for anybody uh, with that type of uh, fund. So one of the questions was, do we know the administrative, fund, administrative costs? Right now, we still at the early stages. The answer so we, is don't, we don't have all of the costs right now. No, we don't have all the cost factors yet. So we don't have them yet. All right, so Alan, I think all the questions for you have been asked. And if we, it is it okay if we have any more questions? Can we circle back to you and Simone regarding everything we just discussed with the new system? Once the annuity is in place, we'll put out an announcement, uh, like you know, we do with everything else. And but other than that, are we still able? I can come back to you with the questions, right? And we'll post them, right? Yeah, send me an email. Send us an email with your questions, and then okay. we'll send you the. Uh, 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 the email. Okay, thank you. Simone, response. thank you. Yep, thank you. All right, take care all. Good night. Good night. Okay. All right, so next we have um, Yitza Kirkland, our um, EEO lawyer, who's going to give us an update on the most recent um, events when it comes to the EEO case. Yetta, unmute. Unmute. We can't hear you. Unmute you. Hey. All thank right. You. Thanks, Tony. All right. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, Good to see you all. So um, let me just start by saying, as, you, as many of you know, it's an exciting opportunity for your union, which has taken a leadership position in a movement that's been happening across the city of New York with regards to employees working for the city. The city is an employer of almost 300,000 employees and they are predominantly of color. Uh, there's a large portion of them who are women, um, and there has been a growing awareness around the pay inequity within that workforce. Um, 300,000 employees is a lot of employees, and UPOA is one of a handful of unions that's taken a leadership role uh, by pushing forward with affirmative action to correct some of the pay disparities. So we've been working on this for a while and it's a full court press. It's, um, you know, our job, our law firm's job is just the four corners of the litigation, but I know others have been working with you uh, to raise awareness in the uh, court of public opinion in the public arena and um, 
it's funny because it's only been a year since we filed the EEOC charge, a little over a year. We, we filed it in June of 2019. Um, and it's, a, it's, it's slow moving in a lot of ways generally because what you're trying to do with a class action lawsuit, because you're claiming, uh, make, making Title VII federal claims, um, you have to go into the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission first and get permission from them to be able to then go into federal court on, on litigation. Um, that is always uh, somewhat of a slow process in the Southern District. It has been, you know, c COVID has impacted everything. It's impacted uh, this process as well. Um, also, um, you know, it's just, um, you know, one step forward, one step back, two steps forward, one step back. If you remember, we uh, sued the city to get uh, documentation in terms of um, data for the claims and the initial court uh, the initial judge declined to to uh, award that to us, which is unfortunate. Uh, prior to that, in similar Article 78 proceedings, we've been successful. Since then, we've won other Article 78s requesting the same information. So, you know, you don't always get it. Sometimes it can be a little bit hit or miss, but um, we appealed that decision and uh, we appeared in the first department of the appellate court two weeks ago. And Erica Kagan, who I think you guys spoke with maybe last month, um, was the lead attorney arguing before the appellate division. And she did a fantastic job. and. Um, uh, really was able to make our case for the data. Um, with or without the data, we're proceeding with the Title VII claims. Um, we also got news a couple of weeks ago that finally we, have, we will be given a right to sue, which is a permission to go into federal court to proceed uh, with federal claims um, in the Southern District. So there is there has been some motion, um, but um, things are a little slow. Um, we have not gotten the actual right to sue letter yet. I want to say that was three, two or three weeks ago that we got confirmation of that. Um, so, you know, hopefully, it, and because we're suing against a municipality, the EEOC also has to get clearance from the D Department of Justice. Um, the US DOJ also has to weigh in on issuing the right to sue. So sometimes that takes a little bit of time. I've been touching base with the EEOC investigator and letting them know, you know, just following up. I don't want to be too, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to upset her, but I also want to let her know that we want to move forward. Um, you know, the, 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 all of the legal processes are a little bit slower going, um, but you know, we are, we are moving forward. Um, and in the meantime, like I said, we're working on getting data turned over. We're in constant contact with leadership with UPOA as issues come up that may or may not be related to our underlying claims. Remember, you know, our underlying claims are that um, we're talking about segregated workforces where these positions that, that UPOA holds were many, many, many years ago, predominantly white, predominantly male. As those demographics changed, the value of those positions, the payment of those positions, and the overall treatment of those positions changed, um, resulting in now significantly lesser paid than what the work is that's done, a repression of a, of a, of a ladder to get, uh, to climb up, to have upward mobility with regards to um, pay and also positions um, within, within the titles, um, an increase in terms of the responsibilities, the obligations that are put on uh, uh, probation officers and supervising probation officers, um, and higher and higher requirements in terms of skill, knowledge, and ability, and, and training to, to be in these positions. And so, you know, things have come up in the course of the last couple of years, um, and we make sure to integrate those issues into the litigation, into the preparation for the litigation, so that hopefully we're in a good place to um, file a complaint in federal court when we finally do get the full green light to be able to do so. Um, so that's basically where we are. 
Uh, we haven't heard yet from the, um, the appellate division in terms of getting data. Um, ho hopefully they will rule in our favor. We, we don't get to say, um, but there is some good precedent out there. Uh, other cases that we've won, you know, every judge has a different uh, analysis. Some, all but but this uh, all but this case unfortunately um, has gone in our favor. Um, hopefully this one will too. But the good news is whether we get the data or not initially, once we are in federal court as part of disclosure and as part of the discovery process, uh, we're going to have a right to that documentation one way or the other. So uh, so that's basically where we are. Uh, Katrina, if you want me to speak on any other specific area, I'm uh, yeah, happy to do that. But but now we're good. I think I think as long as we, we gave him an update, me and Vera was present virtually at the appellate court, so we actually had the opportunity and the pleasure of witnessing the good, excellent job that um, Erica did, and we got to see the whole setup on the judges. It was really interesting the experience. So um, we appreciate you, Yetta, and we're going to continue pushing forward and. It's going to be a journey, but we can't give up. We can't get, I don't believe that the higher power got us this far to try to leave us alone. So I'm going I'm to keep the faith and I want all you all to, to, do the, to do the same. And let's just stay and keep you pushing each other up. That's all. So we appreciate you. Thank you. Great. Okay. Good night. Yep. Take care, guys. Okay. So recently, the um, not too long ago, about August, Harry's about to jump in on this one. The mayor had announced some layoffs of 20 to 22,000 city employees. And right away, all, we, we all jumped, the, the municipal, municipal Labor Committee, which I, I'm a part of, um, we all jumped on it. And I wrote a letter to the mayor on behalf of all my um, members and asked that we be exonerated, that we be excused from, exempt from being, any of us being terminated because we are a vital um, part of the criminal justice system and we are the alternative to corrections and we can't afford to, we're down to the bare bone. We can't afford to give up nothing and we can't afford to lose anybody. And um, so I wrote a letter to the mayor's office. I did have a discussion some, with someone from the mayor's office and I'm hoping that it had some kind of impact and had them reassess the importance of probation officers role in the criminal justice system. But every, not just with probation officers, but every city employee serves a major function. We have a body. And without one part of the body, the body falls apart. So every city worker, in my opinion, is very vital. Um, in my letter and in my speech at Folly Square back on August 3rd, but I want you to thank those who came out and supported all the unions and um, was there to represent. Um, I talked about, you know, and we all talked about, all the unions talked about how dare the, we're not doing the presentation, Tandra. Um, how, how dare the city even consider layoffs after we put ourselves, our lives on the line, and um, we probation officers never stopped working. Um, we had to, uh, the, the, we was, had the fortune, we was fortunate enough to be able to work in a, a schedule where we can work in the office and out the office, but at the same time, we still put our lives on the line and probation never stops. Um, and I had to highlight that too. And I also mentioned in my, in my letter and in the, um, speech at the Foley Square that, you know, we've been out there feeding people and making sure that other people are fed and wouldn't it be ironic if the same people that we fed that we now became a part of that line. And that's something that we cannot accept. So our attorney, Harry Greenberg has been working very hard. He's the, 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 the attorney for all municipal, for the municipal committee in and of itself. And he's been working very hard with all of us trying to prevent these layoffs, which he's going to talk about. Also, people have been asking us about a bill. There's been so many different bills out there on this early retirement and different rumors about the early retirement packages um, that um, I just found out today after meeting Mr. Greenberg that there's another one. One was given to me, and then less than a week, another one is out there. I was told, Harry, after I spoke to you today that those two are supposed to be merged together. I don't know. We'll talk about that later. Um, he's going to elaborate on that. So. I know there's some concerns. Right now, the, the, the layoffs has been delayed because initially it was scheduled for October 1st and we would've got a 30 day notice. The unions get a 30 day notice and we get a notice in advance and then the member gets the notice after that and so forth. Right now it's been delayed and let's just pray to the higher power that it does not happen. So right now, I don't know of any 
word of anything else when it comes to these layoffs, but Mr. Greenberg is going to now elaborate on the layoffs and the, the pension bill that he just recently told me about. Well, good evening, everybody. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Good. So as uh, Katrina said, um, in early, the early part of the, of the year, we knew there was going to be a big problem with the budget. And the mayor knew it also. And also the governor has a big problem with the budget, his budget. The city needs $9 billion. The state needs $13 billion, which means some of the money we were getting from the state was going to be going away. Then the pandemic hit and things got worse. Now, you don't want anybody to die, so you got to spend on money to make sure that the best things are done to keep people not sick or dying. At the beginning, we were in bad shape, and now we're one of the best states because of what, what's been done. So the mayor was told on May 28th by writing by the MLC, you can get some money saved just by refinancing your debt. Right now, if you're looking for a mortgage, it's 2 or 3%. When you have billions of dollars in debt, that is even a better, a better outlook. It's reduced. So you can reduce what you have to pay just by refinancing. We told him that, that he should have known in May, May 28th. The budget, independent budget office, the state controller and the city controller said, if you do this for this amount of money, you could save and get this between 120 and $175 million a year. That's not all of the debt. It could go up as much as 300 million, but he hasn't done it. All he has done is the smaller package. There are other things he can do. There's transitional fund funding. There's federal reserve money that's out there that Illinois and the MTA here in New York got. The MTA, uh, the uh, Illinois got 1.4 billion. Uh, uh, it's a loan, but sometimes those loans go away at very low rates. And the MTA got 454 million. And by the way, there's other things you can do, like ask the governor to increase your debt limit, your borrowing power. The governor doesn't trust the mayor. He wants to make sure that the money is spent on not having anybody um, uh, laid off. Um, and there's, there's, there's discussions that are happening between the mayor and the city and between the mayor and the MLC and the MLC and the governor. We're acting like a mediator and hopefully we can get something done on that. Having said that, the first thing he did was say, by August 31st, I'm going to announce 22,000 members are going to be laid off, but for police and fire. He, now, he could change his mind on that. There's nothing written in stone. Now, that's unfair. Everybody, if there's a problem, has to share in the pain. Sanitation men were going to be cut a thousand. That means your collections in the city will go from two, two a week to one a week. And that means there's problem for environmental protection because there'll be more rats in the garbage. So, so everything has an effect. Having said that, the MLC wrote a letter to the mayor outlining everything he could possibly do. And as he said, we need to have layoffs as a last resort. So he decided not to issue the August 31st layoff notice. And he needs to do that to give the unions 30 days notice. And what happens when he does that, they then will find out a list, a list of every, the, the, right after the 30 days notice, the procedure is that the members who will be affected will get a notice from the city. And that would have happened October 1. Since there was no notice sent out, every day is a new 30-day notice. So we've already got 29 days that we didn't have before. Having said that, if that notice actually comes, then they'll have to figure out military time, prior city service, and, and a whole lot of other things, whether you're disabled and you're working, it's called Section 55 employee. And once that's all figured out, here's what happens. The people who are in the unit, usually it's, it, it's, it's a, 
a department, but it doesn't have to be. The people who are provisional go first. The people who are on probation go next, and then the permanent civil service go next. Now, if you're a supervisor, you don't get laid off. You get, it's called bump and retreat. You're the youngest supervisor. You go back down, and somebody from that unit goes and, and gets laid off. That's how, in general, the civil service works for the state and the city. Having said that, um, we've been working with the mayor on early retirement. Early retirement in the past has happened in 1975, in 2001, in 2011, when they were, uh, the market crashed. What happens is they have to pass a law saying, if you're in this year, you can get some extra credit for years of service. That's one way of doing it. So we're working off a bill 8599 in the Senate, which is not going to be the final bill. Things are going to be changed. And that bill, the proposal we're talking with the city, and it's not a done deal by far, but the proposal is up to three years. If you have 30, uh, if you have uh, 36 years in, you get one month for every, thir every year. So you can get up to three years of service. And that would affect that you could go and retire now if you were three years short or get three more years even if you were ready to retire. And that's one plan. The other plan is, is uh, they call it an A and a B plan. And the B plan is if you're 55 and 25 years of service, um, you can retire without any reduction in pay, in, in, in pension. But you can't have both. Now, all these things are under discussion at the highest levels. The city actuary, the city corporation council, the mayor, the mayor's office of labor relations, and the NLC. It probably won't happen until next year. So if you're looking to retire this year, you're not going to get it. The reason you're not going to get it is you have to give 90 days notice to opt in. And it's your option to opt in once the law passes and they say it applies to you. So all these things are being worked on as we speak. Having said that, um, that's the, the, uh, the summary as of today. And I must tell you, it's fluid. Things can change in an hour. Right. So what I say to you now may change by tomorrow. Right. Okay. And the last thing I want to talk about is the contract, if you want me to. Yeah, please. Okay. So we, we, we by statute, put in a, a demand to bargain our contract, which is over towards the end of November. And the plan now is Katrina is going to set up a committee that will have people from all, you know, family court, the criminal court, the Supreme Court. And we want to know what your needs are. We know you will need more money and we know you need more benefits, but I need to know your working issues because it would be easier to fix your working issues, especially if it's not economic. It's not going to be a great economic contract, I can tell you that now. And I'll tell you this, there are some big unions that didn't get their contract. One is the police PDA, the sergeants and detectives. Those three don't have contracts, okay? What does that mean? Well, they could all go to binding arbitration and under the payroll law. But the ability to pay is different because the city is really broke. The city is really broke. And why is it broke? Besides the pandemic, besides the pandemic, there's no money coming in. People are not going to restaurants. Tourists are not coming. People are unemployed. They're not paying taxes. All of those things, and I don't see it changing that much. The next fiscal year. Now, the mayor wanted 11 days furlough, 11 days without pay. 11 days without pay of work days is over 4%. And your biggest raise was three. We could never agree to that. Never. Never, ever. Are there other things that could happen? Yes. But we're not going to give away your money, period, the end, if that's at all possible. But we're not even up to that. Because this could all be fixed between the governor and the mayor, giving transitional funds, changing uh, the, the interest rate they're paying, 
and all the other things that I talked about. And that's why the mayor held off on the layoffs. And by the way, the fiscal year is July 1 to June 30th. The mayor wanted 11 days off in the nine months between now and June 30th. That, that is right now off the table. So nobody's gotten a notice yet, right? And that being the case, we hopefully we were waiting till after November 3rd. What's November 3rd? It's the presidential election. This president has not given us a penny, zero, nothing. If Biden gets in, it's another story. It may take a little time, but the city has a reserve of two to three billion dollars. Now that sounds like a lot of money, but that will only get us through this nine month period. All right, so all of these things are fluid and they're worked out. And even if you can ask me questions, I may not be able to answer them because tomorrow everything I just told you could change. Could change for the better or could change for the worse. So I really wanted to make sure you understood where we're at and that we're not sitting back and doing nothing. As far as the contract, we're going to have a committee. Hopefully the committee will be a working committee and it's the worst job in the world. It's the worst job because everybody wants to know what we're doing in the contract negotiations. And we never, ever can tell you. And why is that? Because what we say across the table changes on an hourly basis, yep. right? So yep. if we tell you something today and we change it to tomorrow, look what you told me. You didn't tell us the truth. And that's never going to be the case. We're going to be as transparent as we can without making sure that the members are, are injured in any way. So we're gonna get a committee, we're gonna to demand to work face to face with the city. Hold on a second. All right, so while Harry gets to- Oh no, I, Okay, okay. Got it? No, unmute, I, unmute. I unmuted. Okay. We're gonna to demand to work face to face with the city. And I will tell you, every union wants that meeting and nobody's getting it as of now because of the pandemic. Yep. There could be rooms that are big enough and we can wear protective equipment so we can have a face-to-face -face meeting with the budget people, with the agency, and with the mayor's office of labor relations. That's what we're looking to do. But we need to take steps here. Now we're gonna look to get a meeting as soon as possible. I don't know what that means. It could be October, it could be November, it could be December. Nobody, nobody is getting any meetings with the mayor's office of labor relations. Nobody. And we're pushing forward. And the fact that I'm with the MLC gives you a leg up as co-counsel. So, so that's what I have to report. And I wanna thank you for the opportunity of bringing you up to date. And I wanna bring you good news sooner rather than later. Don't leave, Harry. Stay around. I'm not um, all right, because we got this. We got some questions, and we got some, um, <laughs> and we got some um, other stuff. So, the making strides, Tan. The making strides this year. The um, breast cancer uh, making strides will not be having their traditional um, walks because of the pandemic. So, from my understanding, they're going to be doing some virtual walks, Tan. They're going to have virtual, a lot of different virtual events throughout. Throughout the city, just say yes or no. You're going to share the screen, okay? So they're going to have a lot of different virtual events throughout the city, and there's a site or Tanta is going to provide the site where you could go. What? Click, find out the listing of you're going to buy a menu of unmute yourself, T, just for one minute, just a minute. Okay. Go ahead. Each borough has um, from October 1st to October 31st different events throughout the month of October. Um, up on the website, it has for each borough listed a fact sheet of the different dates and the different activities for each borough. Um, we're also doing a fundraiser. We're selling um, a face masks, black, with the butterfly, with the pink butterfly, breast cancer. Photo and it matches. If anybody bought the shirts last year, the black baseball jerseys, the mask matches those shirts. 
Um, the masks are ten dollars each. Um, we're also selling uniform lapel um, patches. Um, they are only for officers only, and the maximum is two patches per person. The price is one for five dollars, two for seven. And then last year we sold lapel pins, and we're still selling them this year. And they are ten dollars. Um, they're pretty. And if I could share my screen. Share your screen and I'll take it from here. So Tank is going to share the screen. And um, you you have your, um, she's going to share the flyer in a minute, as soon as she figures it out. Otherwise, it <laughs> will be linked to our newsletter and to our website, um, the, the um, beautiful items that we're selling. But some of the, I see there's some retirees on the meeting tonight. I really want to say thank you all for joining us because some of this information does relate to you all as well. Um, the ASO access re relates to you all as well. And you can also join in That's in the fun. fundraising um, activity. There it is. In the fundraising for the, um, for the, for the making strides. There it is. So as you can see, we have this beautiful, colorful flyer. And as you see, there's the mask on top that matches the jersey from last year. So that has to be pre-ordered. You have to see any of those um, captains at the bottom here. You have Michelle Waters from the Bronx. You got Winifred Rivers from Brooklyn. You got Florence Johnson from Manhattan. You got Kim Sanchez, Queens. We, okay, that's, you got um, Jean Brown, Staten Island, Toronto Evans, Bronx family. We got Kim Lawton, Manhattan family, Brooklyn family. Brooklyn family, Felicia Finch, uh, Manhattan family, Cheryl Heath, King's family, I mean, Queen's family, and Kelly Martin. You contact any one of these ladies and they can um, help you with them. You can see them for the purchasing of your items. Today, I gave out um, the patches for um, all, of, everybody has their stuff except the Staten Island. Rochelle, we'll figure out a way to get the stuff to Staten Island. Jean's not here right now, so we'll figure something out. So everybody has their um, items to be distributed, but the, the, the masks have to be pre, those masks, they have to be pre-ordered because um, we're not, we have to um, put your order in, give the money to the individual that you choose to give your money to, and then I'll send it over to Tangent and she'll put the orders in. The when last it day for placing your order is October 23rd. 23rd, but the, the patches, the patches and the, um, see, see the beautiful patches? The patches are available right now. So you can get the patches at, at any time and contact those people. And we want to try to raise, and then or you can also go to, these captains should have registered, by, should have signed up by now. So if you don't want to do necessary the items, you can do a monetary or have your family members go on and do a monetary contribution because, you know, we have, it go, there go our retiree, Yvonne Hernandez, right? Who showed her, she still got her pen from last year. Thank you, Yvonne. She's the vice president of the Retiree Association as well. Um, so that's the that's the um, the fundraiser for the um, for the making strides. And I'm hoping that it, we have a really good turnout. Um, Tant is putting up. What's that, T? This is the um, fact that's sheet Kim's for story. Brooklyn. Uh -huh. I created one for each borough. Okay. So what, what's that for? They got a, That's how they. Oh, those are the events. Okay. Yeah. So she created, a, and you're going to put that on the website as well, and we could put it on the, on the, and I guess we can ask Jeff to put it on the social media and, and, and take for them to have access to. And I'm hoping that we have a really good turnout, especially this year, this, this 20, 2020 has come in and it has made, had a lot of dark moments and we lost a lot of loved ones and the people who, um, those who are suffering with cancer are even more vulnerable to um, getting sick. So we want to do our part and I'm getting emotional just thinking about it because I lost family members to COVID myself. So I know that we all have been going through some kind of struggles in one way or the other. One real quick thing. We lost three sisters this year. We lost um, Zelsa Martin and um, Deborah Phillips and um, McKeithen, uh, McKeithen, McKeithen. And I'm going to um, normally as Normally, I would have gotten a, a, a memorial placket for them, Kiyomi, Kiyomi, Kiyomi. I normally would have gotten their families the, 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 the memorial plaques by now, but because of COVID, I couldn't. So right now, I'm working on the memorial plaques. I will share with you all, like I always do, on social media, and we're going to make arrangements to 
get their family members their packets in some kind of way. I'm working with the area managers. We can't have nothing big, but whoever's there and the family member can come and pick up the plaque and we give them a little something just to show our love and support of those who's mourning the loss of our sisters. So once I get everything together, I will share it with y'all. Um, so there's some questions that we have that I want to address. So, um, so we got the answer to the discrimination lawsuit. You can show where we was at on that. Um, we I also spoke about the, our concerns about the layoffs. And yes, it can have some devastating impact on those who are left behind. And like I said, God willing, we got to pray that it, it doesn't happen. Um, and you got the answers about the contract negotiations. Um, we had a question about um, there were um, a, a correction, a court officer that was positive in, in Queens County Court. And the question pretty much was, what does the department do? So I talked to Suzette. I wanted to get an answer from Suzette from her before we had this meeting instead of me saying, I'll get back to you. And I spoke to Suzette and her response was, if any of the members in any given situation, whether it's courts, corrections, any agency that we work among, if you know of anybody that's positive and if any of you have been in proximity of that person and you're concerned about your well-being, you have to contact, go through your chain of command, contact your chain of command and also in all situations when it comes to the, um, being positive or being around someone that's positive for um, um, COVID, you have to contact HR and let them make that determination as to what the next steps will be because we can't make that decision. But, we, 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 but what we will do is follow up and um, what we will do is follow up and, and make sure that, which we, we, we will make our best effort because we just found out about one situation that we thought was taken care of, but it wasn't. But I don't want to get everybody up in the, you know, we'll deal with that. If we know about it, we'll speak on it. All we can do is speak on it and ask the department, are you, like we have people who was positive, are you cleaning the areas? They tell us what they want to tell us. I don't know how to confirm otherwise. If you see something, say something. If you know that an area was not cleaned, which we just found that was not cleaned out, let us know and we will address it. But if you've been around somebody, like I said before, that you know, a court officer, a correction officer, somebody, a police officer that you work with and they end up positive, then you have to let HR know and they'll tell you what to do. But we can't tell you what to do, but we will always follow up on what you need to do. I would suggest that everybody continue to get tested and to get tested for antibodies. We have had members who were never sick and got tested for the antibodies and found out they had COVID. And I believe at some point, most of us have. I think I even had it at one point because I did end up in the hospital during this whole, um, this whole in the top and early parts of the month. I know they told me I was dehydrated. I don't even know how I got dehydrated. So I could have had it. I wouldn't be surprised when I do get the antibody tested, they'll tell me that I had it. So the best thing we can do is do all we can to keep ourselves protected. Um, earlier this year, I gave you guys the, the, the PPE and I gave you masks. And if you really feel uncertain and not that, that you don't feel as you're in a safe environment when you come into this office or anywhere on this earth, right? I suggest you put your face face shields on along with the, that's an additional protection um, for your, um, with, along with the mask. Um, there was a concern about the DNA with um, intake. I'm going to find out more about what, that's, what that is, but one of the intake officers recommended that we, that you all use that face shield that the union gave you to courts for added protection. We're going to make some recommendations to management tomorrow about how we think that should look compared to how it's being done now. I have some ideas on how that might, how that can be done, but um, I don't want to say too much about it because I got to see where they're coming from before I know exactly what's going on. So I like to do my homework and see what that's about. Um, Harry, they're asking about buyouts. Um, should this be put on the table when you have an idea? And who's eligible? Well, buyouts are the early retirement thing that I explained. It, that's that's the re early retirement. So you got the answer about the early retirement package. They also are asking about the 50%, returning back to work at 50%. Does the, is the department checking the vents and making sure that the areas are clean? So we got to talk to uh, the department tomorrow morning. Tomorrow. tomorrow. We'll find out what, what, what steps they're taking to keep you all safe, and I have to also, and I also added to my agenda tomorrow is the plexiglass. 
Now I'm hearing rumors that the plexiglass is being shared. That's nasty. The whole purpose of the plexiglass is to have your own separate plexiglass. It's like, what's the purpose? I don't know how true that is. So one of the questions we'll be asking in regards to the reopening of, at the 50% is, first of all, does DSAR know about it, right? For those buildings, DSAR, is it all the buildings? And I believe in Anna's last week's closeout, she kind of, I believe I read it to, to be that she's leaving that at the discretion of the area managers as to the frequency in which you all will be coming back to work, right? So I personally want to keep this program going. I want to keep the schedules going. I seen her in one of her emails too, that she commended you all for the good work that you're doing. There are some, not many, very few, who for whatever reasons, it's not doing what they need to do. I don't know. We've, me and Vera has been working, Lalisa has been working with individuals who, for whatever reasons, is not keeping up with their um, work for whatever reasons. And we are working with them, trying to figure out how to get them where they need to be because we don't want this program to be taken away. I, can, I think I can speak for you all that you're all liking this type of schedule, um, right? Okay, so we got to keep our complaints about, like somebody said, oh, now we got to come in two days a week. Depending on your assignment, you might have to, right? I know for, um, for a fact, some, some units never stop doing nothing. They might not be going to the office as frequently, but like especially supervision and adult supervision, they just kept on going. Um, there's a concern about the courts. I believe Queens is now coming in two days a week. That might be an intake and CLO. That might be, but I'll find out in any court um, um, assignment related officer who's late to the courts, whether it be PSI's intake or um, intake or um, CLO, you all might know the answer better than me, but I'll get confirmation from the department. The reasons that the, you might have to come into the office more because earlier in the year, there was like 37,000 backlogging cases, which I'm sure has increased by now. I'm assuming that might be the answer to the question, but I'm gonna find out if that's, if, that, if that's true. But can I say for them to say no, we don't want them to come in one or two days a week. I'm not even going to tell you a lie like that because right now that becomes down to an operational need thing. But at the same time, we have to make sure that you all are being kept safe. One thing I want to tell you about being kept safe, don't depend on anybody to keep you safe. At the end of the day, you're going to be responsible for yourself. Yeah, they're supposed to be doing what they're supposed to be doing. And I'm told that there's PPE available to you. I went to a manager's office today and they showed me they got the PPE and they can come in and go get it. But at the end of the day, you are responsible for yourself. And you all know, if you don't know, I'm going to tell you again, Charlene, back me up. We reimburse you for your PPE if you buy some, right? And people have been putting them in. Charlene, take yourself off mute. Push. How much should we, we, we still be reimbursing for the PPE, right? Yes. That's Charlene, y'all, behind the scenes, Charlene, um, who's run, who helps run the fund office and um, is, a, is a blessing and an asset to the office. So Charlene is the one that processes the claims and makes sure that the claims get done along with Joanne and myself. So um, we are still, and we will continue to reimburse. That's something that we're not going to stop doing. Up to how much? Up to $300. Up to $300. So you got enough wiggle room to purchase your own. Well, it, go, it goes against the non-drug up to Right, 300. right. So yeah. we have the non-drug, which is 300. So whatever you purchase for your PPE is deducted from that $300. It's not a separate entity from that. And for the retiree, no, no not the retiree. Did we do, yeah. Um, we, we, ha we can't. Right, because they're and not active. active. And for the retirees, we can't reimburse because they're not working. They're not, see you got, we doing this, for the active, and I'm being transparent because you guys work and you're dealing with the public retirees. Is they go to what Florida <laughs> and they and they not <laughs> so, they're, so that's the reason why there's a distinction. But Matrina, just say because we don't have contributions for them and we don't get right for that, for that, for that. That's, so there's a little better, right? So so they'll understand that better. So what else? Um, now I want to. I think if there's any more questions. No, I just answered that. So if there's, which HVAC in offices don't work? What is that? Oops. Sheila, open up Sheila. Sheila, that's, I've got to get. HVAC and the AC systems and all that. 
What is that? Show? The, air, the air filter system. That's a ventilation okay. system. It's a ventilation All right. System. right. So what we'll do is, and that's been a big issue with the teachers union, right? So what we'll do is, and Cheryl Heap has brought that question up before labor management. We will definitely make sure that they have checked the air, the vents, and cleaned them out, and um, and we'll follow up with that. So I believe that we've covered everything. Um, I'm going to do some final statements, and then if I miss anything, we will pro we will um, upload the questions along with the answers up to on the website. Um, so we talked about don't forget to open to start your ASO ASO accounts, and that goes for retirees and active, and we will put it up on the internet and on the on the social media for you guys. Um, we were supposed to have, I didn't want to tell y'all this, but, and I didn't announce it early, but we were supposed to have had a holiday event. We're going to have to cancel it. We was having it at Anton's this year. It was going to be December 19th, but the executive board and the trustees agreed. It's too dangerous. As much as I know y'all want to get together, maybe we'll do a virtual holiday party. I don't know. But right now, I, I love you guys too much to jeopardize y'all for a daggone party. I'd rather wait. Wait, if you, and I'm sorry, but I'd rather write it out. I think the executive board would rather write it out than jeopardize you all for the sake of a party. And we'll figure out some kind of way to celebrate. I'm not even sure if we're going to do the traditional giving to the boroughs because I don't, and I got to talk to more, your, to the, to, I don't know, the executive board or to the, maybe even the department because you guys usually have those events on their location. So we have to really follow the CDC rules and as far as, gathering in places. And if you know, if you've been paying attention, the numbers are going up in certain areas of New York City. And I will be very upset to know that if we had anything to do with that. Not to say that you can't get COVID anywhere just walking out the door. So the how they, the, how they have been had to be, will be. Um, God bless you. Thank you. You're welcome. Are you um, all right? Yeah. <laughs> The, um, as you all know, the presidential debate is tonight at 9 o'clock. I suggest that you all get out and vote. If you got any young kids, family, friends, and members that just turned 18, let that be a celebration of their adult life going into adulthood and let them know that their vote does matter and that their, like, and their future is going to very much depend on it. I am not trying to sway your voting decision, but whatever we do today is going to affect our future tomorrow and us as senior citizens and us as people, period. Remember to fill out your census because our census and our head counts matters too because it deals with, it, and Harry, if I'm correct, it accounts for the funding in the different locations. If You're Correct. Right. And then um, before I close, um, no, I did some of the questions, like I said, I'm going to look into tomorrow when we have our labor management meeting. Um, if, you're not, if you have not sent us your emails, this is a time to drop us the emails. You can put them in the chat and make sure we have all the emails. Um, and our PR team will make sure that you're getting all the emails. There may be some reasons. Jeff, are you on? Because there's reasons some people are saying they're not getting them. Where can they look at to get the emails? Yep, I'm on. They just got to send an email to that general email address, and I'll put them on. Now, some of them are saying that no matter what we do, they're not getting it. Where else can they look? In the junk mail? Um. We will, you know what, maybe we just start putting up the links to each one on Facebook then. Okay, we will talk, right. So, cause I don't know why, cause I know sometimes I wasn't getting it. And you look in the junk mail, we could, you can get it. And we'll talk more about it, Jeff. Um, the newsletter is coming now. So whoever missed this meeting, we will post it. Jeff will post it on our social media. You can watch it all over again. If anybody said they missed it, let them know it will be posted. I will send out the, my monthly newsletter, reiterating some of these items that we discussed. Um, and also, any other questions you can refer to, correct me, Jeff, unitedprobation at gmail.com? Unitedprobation at gmail.com. Okay, so that's where you can, and not just for the meetings, at any given time, feel free to, and people do do it, go to that, web, to that email and post your concerns and reach out to us. So with that said, I'm going to say good night. I thank you all for coming, and um, I look forward to seeing you at the next meeting, and hopefully we'll have some good news, um, and it'll be before the holidays. We just got to figure out how we're going to celebrate. Maybe we'll do a virtual party. With that said, I love you all, and good night.